Hello, I'm the Budget Modeler, and this is the final episode, episode 22, of my Copper State Models 132nd Cauldron G3. If you're watching this, then please subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, and ring my bell. That'd be brill. Thank you. To begin this episode, we're going to be doing, yep, you guessed it, more rigging. We'll be finishing off the front section of the tail booms. So, without further ado, let's crank up the speedy uppy thing for the last time on the cauldron and crack on. And there we have the front end of the tail booms all nicely rigged. Now for the rear section of the booms. These two go diagonally across the top. So let's get them cracked, shall we? There we have those two cross rigging lines done. I'd already done one earlier, I noticed that just now. But looking nice and symmetrical, so I'm really happy. Next bit of rigging is across the top of the wing from the top of the boom, so let's get that cracked, shall we? There we have those two lines fitted nicely. Next up is the undercarriage rigging, so let's get that sorted, shall we?
And there go the shakes. That was quite a bad one. It's a bit like when you have a huge yawn and your body quivers. That's the closest thing to that. Anywho, less of my issues. You're here for the model. Those rigging lines are looking pretty good. So let's get those set finished off, shall we? And there we have the undercart rigging finished. Not too shabby, I'm happy with that. I did cut a big chunk out as nothing untoward happened, which is highly unlike me. Yay! This is what the finished rigging looks like. Very nice, even if I say so myself. 25 hours of rigging that took. I actually quite enjoyed it, very therapeutic. Anyway, now a quick test fit of the engine. We'll take it off. Then we'll paint the tyre valves and undercart springs. I'm using Vallejo Metallics 71.062 aluminium. Then we'll be gluing the wheels in place. So let's get that cracked, shall we? There we have the tyre valves and undercarriage springs painted. And then we glued the wheels on and she's now sitting on her own legs very nicely. Next up, we're gonna wash the engine, not the clean type. What we're gonna do is we'll give it an umber wash from Vallejo's Game Wash, which is 73.203, so here we go with that. There we go, that's the engine wash done. I had to spin it a bit as I think I put too much on, but it still looks okay. Now we're going to very gently hairy stick the two caps over the engine. We're using Vallejo Metallics Bright Brass 71.067, so let's crack on with that. That went well. Hmm. What's going to go wrong? I'm sure something will. Anywho, let's get the exhaust done. I'm using Dirty Downs Rust. This stuff is really talent in a bottle. It's bloody amazing. So let's get it done.
Good lord, the positions you get yourself into to paint a bleeding exhaust. Ridiculous. Anyway, we've painted exhaust, but what we're doing here is we've just cleaned the brush, put plain water on the exhaust, just to lighten certain areas. That's the good thing about this dirty down dust. Now we can move on to the aerial. We just need to drill a small hole and glue it in place. So here we go with that. There we have the aerial glued in place. Now for a bit of a laborious job, painting the turnbuckles. I wish I'd gone with the aluminium now, but hey ho, next time. What we're doing is we're using Tamiya's X32 Titanium Silver. So here we go with that. That was definitely truncated. Not a single issue. I'm really chuffed with that. Now, a tad bit of weathering. I'm putting a couple of dobs of varnish colour. You know, my homebrew, 50% Tamiya X24 clear yellow and 50% Tamiya X26 clear orange. Then get the airbrush out and blow it back across the fuselage towards the cockpit. The reason for this is the aircraft is just out the hangar and it's on its first test run of the engine. One of the ground crew spilt a bit of oil which got kicked back. There we go, that's my backstory for this model. Anywho, let's crack on. And there we have the final bit done. And now for those money shots. Some of you may notice I've used the Fokker DR1 base that I did a couple of years ago. As we go through these, let me tell you what I thought of this kit and a couple of bits of advice for you. I have to say this is a brilliant kit. Very close to Wingnut Wings kits. I've now built both so I can compare them. These are really, really good kits. Would I build this again? Hell yes. Are there things that I would do differently? Yeah, but only one. I'd use aluminium tube, not brass. Two reasons. One, it cuts easier. And two, you don't have to paint it. Would I recommend this model? Yes, I would, but big caveat, advanced models. Mainly because of the rigging. Not one I would jump into cold. Build up to it. Remember, it takes time to build up your skill level. With this model, I've mainly used it to concentrate on my rigging skills. As I've said before, each model I make, I use it to practice a specific skill. I don't worry about other things. I just concentrate on that specific skill. As long as I improve one skill per model, I'm really happy. But that's how I work. You work to you. Don't stress, this hobby teaches you that. Well, that's what I've learned. If you stress too much, it's then not a hobby. Well, after those words of wisdom, let me leave you with the rest of the pictures.
Anywho, this seems like a good place to end this episode. So, so thank you for watching episode 22, the final episode. Really, really appreciate you spending the time watching these video series. If you want to see what I'm planning to do next, then please subscribe to my channel. Help it grow, like the video, leave a comment and ring my bell. Remember folks, stay safe, keep on modelling.